Hello, Internet. Welcome to Fina Mads, so where today we discuss one huge question. Where do we come from? I mean, it's obvious to most of you that we came from our parents, specifically from our mother's womb. But, in all honesty, it just isn't as simple as that. We all know that we came from our parents when we were conceived in the womb and developed there for 9 months. Bada bing bada boom, we are now a bipedal mammal called a human in English, made up of a combination of genes from your mother and father. But that may very well only be part of the story. For one thing, the body of a mother needs to have proper resources to evolve you into an actual living human being, which means water and food. Although the genes clearly provided a blueprint as to how you were meant to be made, water and food was the true resources. Similar to how humans may make a newspaper thinking about the contents of the articles and the pictures, but the actual materials used to create them was the paper and ink, not the people. Essentially, you can say that you and me both are 100% recycled material. Speaking of us as recyclables, many religions also interpret that we are, in fact, nothing more but life created from the ground. For example, many Greeks believe that humans had grown like plants would out of the ground, just out of pure dirt. And many Christian denominations believe that their God unmolded the first man out of dirt as a statue, then breathed life into that man. And as with many of those belief systems, they also come back full circle and say that when humans die, they happen to return back to the dust and dirt from where they once came. However, let's look at this from a scientific perspective as well. As stated earlier in the video, on religious fetuses, we are the compilation of the resources like food and water entered into our body and structured in a way so that it'll form a human from the genealogical blueprint. Of course, this originates from a single cell that multiplies into multiple cells, but even that single cell resulted in the creation of an egg and a sperm that combined into a zygote. And obviously, the two components of a zygote has to also be made with proteins that come from food and cytoplasms that come from water, as well as some other resources. Essentially, the all of the cells in your body is a product of a unique arrangement of different particles from the resources that we digest. After all, we don't just consume these nutrients to pass through us, we use it to run our bodily functions. Digging deeper, uh, all cells need carbohydrates to provide energy, lipids, which are fats, fats that store energy and structs the cells, nucleotides or nucleic acids to code in our genes, and proteins to enact on those coded genes. Considering that most of these resources can actually be found in the food we eat, the drinks we drink, and from other external sources, it's clear that we just recycle everything for use in our own body. Not to mention, the molecules used to create the food and those drinks could come from really anywhere. The earth's dirt, the oceans, even from space. After all, all organic life forms are just clever arrangements of molecules. And as we grow, so we obviously need more cells to grow as both a fetus as well as to go from a newborn to an adult. It is really just an accumulation of more and more cells for growth. Not to mention, every time in which you're cut or hurt in some way, the cells in your body must to heal that area here of your body that's damaged. Even if the damage is just a bruise or a scratch of some kind, in cells, be it platelets or just normal cells, will be created to be rushing to heal that part of your body. If your cells didn't do that, then you might die or at least end up in the hospital from just a simple pickup. And that's not even including all the other possible ways cells are used. For example, our body creates white blood cells, new helper T cells, and other cells in in order to accommodate as a sort of defense system against viruses. If we didn't do that, our species would be as well as non-avian dinosaurs, aka extinct. 
It's pretty clear that our body are just cycle for beings of the same original cells that slowly build up on top of each other. Except our bodies aren't like that. Yes, our bodies are recycling machines. But no, our bodies aren't just the same cells being built up from the beginning. In fact, our bodies are anything but that. We're constantly changing machines, receiving new cells until, well, we're dead. For one thing, you might ought to think the trillions of viruses, bacteria, and fungi that are, are crawling inside of you every single day. Those microbes, although they sound unpleasant, actually help your body in more ways than you may realize. Not only can they help you digest food, but they can also assist your immune system in fighting off pathogenic microbes, along with aid in so many other functions. We humans learn to coexist with these microbes, and we can't deny the fact that this exists within us. And as they exist within us, as in practically control a part of our body, can we really say that our bodies are ours? Our bodies aren't just huge statues, we're teeming with cells that are working together with their body. Alongside microbes that are completely separate organisms from us that is that only assists our body. Not to mention all that came from external sources. Food, water, materializing within us. Even stranger, our bodies aren't even the exact same bodies that existed when we were young. Something that I never explained earlier was that there's an idea that our body cells can replace themselves every 7 years. Meaning that they don't really have to have the same body just three years off from a decade before. However, this seven year myth isn't exactly true. Keyword exactly. The basis on this belief is true. Though most of our body cells frequently not only use external materials to build themselves up into the people we are today, but also to replace themselves on a regular basis. Although the cells of your eyes in the lessons never replace themselves, and nor do your tooth enamel or neurons in your cerebral cortex, it's still seen that many of, of the cells in your body replace themselves consistently. A new skeleton replaces your old skeleton every decade, and white blood takes a bit longer than a year to regenerate. Meanwhile, your red blood cells take about half a year to replace, and livers renew themselves at least once every couple of years. In fact, skin regenerates every two to four weeks, and colon cells every four days. So you can see why I'm saying that your body isn't the same body you had as a fetus, where every cell in your body, except for a couple in your brain, eyes, and teeth, is most likely completely different than what you once was. And so, because of that, are you even you? I mean, think about it. You're made up of trillions of organisms. The parts of you that make up your own body is actually a conglomerate of cells. Those cells mostly replace themselves in multiple times in your life. And each of those cells and microbes are just made up from a clever arrangement of basic molecules. The only evidence we can turn to to say that you are indeed yourself and only yourself would be that if souls exist, as some religious beliefs state, but other than that, we can hardly say that we are much of anything other than recyclable meat sacks that are made out of a collection of organisms. Made out of just basic molecules. In some contexts, the body isn't you yourself, but just a machine that you drive. In other words, you are just the brain, or the rest of your body is, well, separate. But even some suggest that the brain isn't even you. After all, a lot of the brain is automated and made from the same stuff that we explained before. Maybe we aren't even anything but just an odd perception of the world. Or maybe what we are is just a consciousness, and everything is what we are. But what is consciousness? And what are you? Thank you all of you fellow imaginists for watching this new episode, the philosophy series from Philomads. And check out this seamless plugin. If you are a new visitor, make sure to imagine yourself subscribing and watching every video of this channel. And after imagining that, actually do that. You won't regret it. 
and make sure to have a day where you and the trillions of beings with you know exactly where to go. Oh, despite not knowing where you came from. I'll see you all next time.